Thank you everybody for coming to Alpha Voyage Gallery. We are live today on March 29, 2020 here at Alpha Voyage on Tompkins and Dean Martin. So today I have a special presentation. We have a very special lady. She has painted these paintings of wildlife in Nevada and she's gonna talk more about that. And I introduce you to Taylor Ann. Thank you. Hello everybody, my name is Taylor. I am a 31 year old uh, woman here in Nevada. I'm originally from Michigan um, and I came here in 95. So I just wanna tell you a little bit about myself before we go through all the work behind me. So I started um, fairly young in the art world, but my first obsession and love became wildlife and animals in general. So I always wanted to work with them. I wanted to save them. I wanted to do anything I could to be involved. So I really started to dive in, learn more about them. And then over time, I became really fascinated and involved in the art world. So. Uh, I ended up really wanting to just combine the two and what that means is how do I work with animals while doing art which is why I'm here today. So a lot of my work involves uh, wildlife sanctuaries which I'll be touching on that a little bit later. One of the pieces behind me is actually a rescue so you'll be hearing a little bit more about her as well. So to start, I would like to go through each piece one by one, tell you a little bit more about it and the species. So first we're gonna start with the coyote. And the coyote, um, it has deep roots in the American West and population has expanded over the years. And this is mainly due to the fact that um, elimination of wolves has happened throughout the years. Um, and eliminating a lot of the wolves, um, they started to over, override a lot of the population. Um, so you'll end up seeing a lot of them in your neighborhoods and they are pretty optimistic feeders. So they're, you wanna keep your distance, you wanna keep your pets indoors. So there, we're encroaching a lot on their territory, which is why we keep coming into contact with them constantly. So limiting where they are and where we are um, living is very important. So with this particular piece, it's done in charcoal and there's actually tinted purple charcoal. And the reason why I chose that was because certain lighting, when the lighting hits the mountains here in Nevada, you get that really beautiful purple glow and I wanted to bring that into him. And a few years ago, I was walking around in our neighborhood and behind our housing complex is basically an open field. And at one point I heard basically a whole family of coyotes singing. And it was one of the most beautiful sounds I've ever heard. So what I really wanted to do with this piece is um, figure out what, what would happen if I came upon a coyote and that locking of the eyes and maybe you startled him. What would that feel like? So I really focused in on his eyes first and ended up going all the way down. So this is Humi and he is a coyote native to here in Nevada. So our next piece that I'm gonna go over is the bighorn sheep. And he is done in colored pencils. So the bighorn sheep typically um, travel in herds together. And um, for this one, I really wanted to focus in on one sheep in particular. So how, how would I do that? Um, maybe he peeled off from the herd overlooking the mountain range. Um, and focusing in on how that would feel to have him overlook the valley. And bighorn sheep are the state animal for Nevada. And um, in the 1960s, their numbers dwindled to about 7,000 um, due to overhunting. Uh, and they would come in contact with a lot of livestock, um, which ended up causing a lot of disease throughout the species. But because of conservation efforts, um, now they are in around the 10,000 range. 
uh, as far as population goes throughout the Sierra, Sierra mountain range. So that's pretty, pretty um, incredible. Sorry, <laughs> something glitched on me. Okay, so here, that is the bighorn sheep. And like I said, color pencil. So here you're gonna kinda get the feel of what sanctuary work means to me. And this is NYSA. NYSA is done in charcoal and pastel. Uh, she is done mainly in charcoal work and the background is pastels. NYSA is a resident at an Oregon wildlife sanctuary called Wildcat Ridge Sanctuary. Um, she was brought to them as a cub by her former owners. Uh, so that means she was an exotic pet. And her owners, her former owners, figured that very early on, thankfully, that she was a lot more than they could handle. And they were able to have her go to Wildcat Ridge, where she has been since 2007. And this is her as a cub. So she really did win over the hearts of a lot of supporters of Wildcat. And I really wanted to capture that with that beautiful perched look on that log. And um, this is, has been one of my personal favorite pieces and Nice is just such a gorgeous cat. And she's a mountain lion. So mountain lions exist in the Western hemisphere of North America up in, into Canada and they are America's second biggest cat. So they typically stay where the, their main source of food is, which is usually deer. Um, we don't often come in contact with them, but if you were to happen to come in contact with a big cat like a mountain lion, um, the suggested thing to do was to make yourself as large as possible. So swinging your arms around, yelling really loud to scare the cat off. And uh, because they are predators, people tend to view them as bad animals and they're incredibly important to the ecosystem. And the reason why is uh, since their main source of food is deer, um, they typically go after the, the weak, the old, and the diseased. So by going after those, it keeps the deer population a lot healthier and it cuts down on disease rates throughout the animal kingdom. So that's important um, for everybody. And the next piece is called Fly by Night. And this is of a great horned owl. And he is done in white charcoal and black charcoal on black paper. And I made his eyes, um, or I should say, did his eyes with colored pencil. And the reason why is owls just are so magnetic with those beautiful eyes. So I really wanted to keep the focus in on the eyes. So that's why I chose to do the color pencil um, on the eyes in particular and really kind of capture that magnificence and that grace that the owl possesses. So something that is quite fascinating about the owl, about the great horned owl in particular, is their ears are actually not even. So the reason for this is when they turn and tilt their head to listen for the prey, the sound is of equal value in both ears. So it's not echolocation, but it does work fairly similarly. And they are nocturnal, so this helps even more um, find their prey at night. And they are protected under the Migra Migratory Bird Treaty of 1918, which makes it illegal to take, purchase, or trade any part of birds of prey. And they cut down on a lot of the rodent population um, that you come across, whether it be rats, chipmunks, um, insects. So again, very important to keep the balance of ecology here um, in Nevada and across the world. So keep those protected as well. And the last piece I wanna go over is this guy. And he is a Sierra Red Fox done in colored pencil. And this one is very special. And there's a reason why I saved this one for last to talk about. Um, so as you can see, he's 
uh, lounge down in a meadow, not a care in the world. It makes me feel like summer and spring. You just kind of kick back, you take in the beautiful sun, and you know, why, why have a worry about anything? But there is a worry because the Sierra Red Fox is no longer native to Nevada. Years ago, they used to be. Um, unfortunately, due to overhunting um, encroachment on their habitat um, and other factors like taking away their prey, they have dwindled in numbers to near extinction. And they are no longer native to Nevada. They are now in small pockets in California estimated to be about 50 or fewer left. Um, and climate change, the logging industry, um, off-road vehicles are the main cause as to why they could possibly be gone forever. Um, and they are not under the endangered species list. They have been on a waiting list since 2015. And California and a lot of other industries are trying to get them protected legally, but it's been, it's been really a huge fight. Uh, and they, as well as many others, are so important to keep the balance in this world. Their game is going after, again, small pests that we would consider chipmunks, rats. That small game could overpopulate because their predator is gone. And that just offsets everything. So this is why all these animals are so important. And you can make a difference. And I've gotten asked so many times, Ugh, you know, what do we do? You know, I'm one person. What am I supposed to do with all this information? I want to save these animals. I want to do this. I want to do that. But I, I, I don't have the money. I don't have the resources. And I'm here to tell you, just like with any great movement, it takes one voice to make a difference. So what does that mean for you? So let's look at the larger picture, which is pushing Congress to uphold the Endangered Species Act. Uh, the current uh, administration has cut funding to the Endangered Species Act tremendously. So that means a lot of animals are not protected anymore. Um, hunting, open season, which open season because coyotes, for example, have overrun population. Um, that's why we keep running into them. If we kept the balance, we would still have the wolves that, that were here so long ago to keep them in check, to keep the rodents in check, but taking one animal out causes a domino effect. That's why this is important. So going after Congress, it may feel overwhelming and it may feel like sending out those um, generic letters that maybe World Wildlife Fund provides and you just sign your name. It may not feel like a lot, but the more people that, that send these letters to your Congress members, the better it is. And the people will start to listen if your voice is loud enough. So to go on an even larger scale, um, bringing it down to local. So what does Nevada do? Um, efforts to pass the Recovering America's Wildlife Act. This is a federal bill that will provide states with $1.4 billion each year to implement state and wildlife action plans. So Nevada would receive $23 million. With this, um, with this state match, the Nevada Department of Wildlife would be able to have $31 million each year to conserve and manage Nevada's wildlife. So what does that mean? Uh, a lot of wildlife animals would be protected under this bill. So that also means this plan would not only protect local wildlife, but provide education, um, provide law enforcement and recreation. So everybody does really win. It's not just about saving the bighorn sheep. It's about providing care for everything. And this is incredibly important. So large scale, medium. And so this is where I kind of want to introduce my work to wildlife sanctuary work. And NISA is a good example. So in 2013, I was uh, introduced into looking into sanctuary work. How could I have my work provide more care for animals? 
and that's when I came upon Safe Haven Wildlife Sanctuary in 2013. And what they do is they're a not-for-profit, so all of their funding comes from donations. It comes from federal funding um, grants as well. And they provide education to the public. They don't breed the animals. There's no contact with people and animals, which is incredibly important when it comes to sanctuaries. You don't want to have the animal be the main subject. You want the public to be educated by the animal. So hands-off approach, very important. And these are just some of my morals that I really was looking for. And when I became involved, I've been involved ever since. So what I do is I create the portraits of the residents. And these animals were abused, they were neglected, they were exotic pets. Um, they could have been on roadside circuses some of these stories are incredibly heartbreaking. A lot of these animals do have medical bills um, and providing a lot of food to them means they need a lot of funding. One tiger alone needs a lot of food. They need a lot of funding. They need an environment that they can thrive in. So creating pieces of the residents of their portraits is one way that I can tell the animal's story. I want to give their voices back because they can't really speak for themselves. You can walk by and say how beautiful they are, but if you don't know their story, you're not really going to care as much. So with each piece, you get a story. You get to understand their story and why they are important because you're going to see yourself in all of them which is another reason why I wanted to work with sanctuaries, because they do have such deep, beautiful biographies, really, if you think about it. So each time a portrait of a resident sells, 40% of that price goes to Safe Haven, and it provides health care, um, uh, food, all those other costs that these organizations need to fund and help these animals. So. This is one of the other reasons why I'm here, is in June, I will be having a show called um, Art, Art of Safe Haven. And each section will be dedicated to a resident. So you'll get a resident portrait with the story. Each piece will be for sale as well. In the second section, there will be an in memoriam section. So those that have lost, um, they have passed on. Uh, you'll get to see how much they mean to a lot of the volunteers and hear their stories and know that even though they have passed on, uh, their life was filled with so much joy and safety towards the end. And in the third section of the show, you'll be seeing um, it's my Safe Haven packages, which are limited edition prints and um, commission works, each of which uh, portions of those proceeds go back to Safe Haven. And I'll be giving a more in-depth talk about Safe Haven, how to spot a good sanctuary versus bad, and how you can help. And I'm really excited coming June 12th, uh, and I really hope that you guys show and show support for Safe Haven. And I look forward to showing you and sharing their stories because it's important. Thank you. Um, we have a couple of um, attendees who are seeing this. They have a couple of questions. One of them is, what, what brought you to paint and draw wildlife as opposed to anything else? Because your paintings are beautiful mm -hmm. and they do bring life to us. And I want to know what, well, he wants to know what, what caused you to use wildlife. So I've always been drawn to animals in particular. Um, being a small child, I was fascinated that there were so many varieties of life out there. Seeing these huge snakes that are just pure muscle amazing and then learning about sharks that are basically living fossils that's amazing to me 
And to then see a lot of people doing such damage to these animals and cutting down on their habitat loss uh, really upset me and it confused me because I didn't know, like, what can I do? I'm one person. But being able to fall in love with drawing animals um, because I was so amazed by them was what really drew me to them. And I've actually messed around with trying to explore other areas of art, be it still life, portrait work. And it just, it didn't have the same fire as drawing animals did. So that's, that's one of the main reasons why. Thank you. Um, we have another question. Yes. So is there a possibility to bring back a Sierra Nevada red fox somehow to Nevada? So that's, that's a good question. Um, and it's complicated. And I know that's a very generic answer. But is it possible? I would like to think it is possible. With organizations like World Wildlife Foundation, your local Congress members, any kind of local organization that is heavily involved in conservation work, um, if, if they get funding, if they get more press, it could be possible to bring this fox back to Nevada. It would be a very slow run, um, but it could happen if all the pieces were right. Um, instead of, I would honestly think, instead of focusing on bringing it back, bringing the population up could really help at least bring the animal more throughout California and possibly even into northern Nevada. But it would take a lot of time. And we have one more question. Uh, you were saying that uh, Safe Haven takes in uh, like abused and, uh, and like uh, abandoned uh, exotic pets. Uh, how often do you think they're getting new residents on, like, on a regular basis? So I don't have the precise number, but it really does depend each year. And I know that's not a superb answer. Um, but it really does depend on the funding and the room that each organization has to take in animals. Because if they're at full capacity, the last thing they want to do is take in a new resident. So for example, last year, um, I know of at least four uh, animals that were taken in by Safe Haven. And even though four seems like a tiny number, you have to remember that these are very large animals. So we're talking black bears and tigers. These animals take a lot of food. They take a lot of room, which means the more funding, the more that these organizations can do to help and and uh, save these um, possible exotic pets, abused, abused animals. So it really comes down to funding and you can always donate. It doesn't matter if it's a dollar, it doesn't matter if it's $50 a month, every dollar matters. And since I'm on that point, um, you can actually sponsor a resident. So if you go to Safe Haven's website, um, safehavenwildlife.com, you can sponsor uh, a resident for uh, a monthly amount, which that m amount goes to that resident to provide care. So I have two more questions, yes. um, and this is coming from the audience. Sure. Um, the first one is that the cat, the cat in particular looks very lifelike. Mm -hmm. Do you work from life models or photos or memory? So I would, most of my work comes from reference images. This one in particular came from the sanctuary itself. Um, any sanctuary uh, piece that I've done is from a reference image, and I get permission to use them, obviously. Um, I try to make sure I can work from life as often as possible, but because a lot of the animals that I actually do are not native to my backyard, it makes it more difficult. So I actually rely heavily on documentaries. Um, Planet Earth, for example, I can't tell you how many times I've watched that series just to understand the anatomy of animals and how they move, how the muscles shift from one um, portion of the body to the other. And I would honestly recommend anybody that wants to draw animals that can't say, 
get to the plains of Africa. Um, watch documentaries. Um, you'll not only get educated, but you can really study those animals and how they move. And to me, that's been really a lifeline for me. Um, with the same person yes. has the same question. Um, the cat, Nisa, mm -hmm. Nisa, sorry. Nisa, um, yeah. It's really beautiful. He wants to know if you have prints. I do, yes. I do have prints. Prints and are available. And I think that some of them are available here mm -hmm. at Alpha Voyage Gallery. Yes. And I think it's the last question, um, and it's a funny one. Okay, go ahead. How can you save a cow or a pig? Mm, well, there are farm sanctuaries out there. Um, one, I believe, is actually called the Farm Sanctuary, uh, where they do take in um, former farm life that was, again, abused. So that's definitely one way. And the, by the way, if you, if you go on Instagram and look up these farm sanctuaries, they are so beautiful. The videos will just fill your heart with so much joy. Really real. Um, thank you. Thank, thank you, you for coming to Alpha Voice Gallery again. Um, if you have a chance, and we are open eventually with everything going on, you have you can come by and see every month some of the art that we have here. We're lucky that this month we have Taylor Ann, and she came with the story of the animals that she draws. So with that in mind, you know, please share and please let other people know about the wildlife that we have here in Nevada and all over the world, actually. So thank you very much and um, enjoy your day. Yes.